Welcome back to the Skits and Giggles podcast. I am Pascal, chief instigator of this show and your host. I'm joined by my co-host and the resident engineer, the yin to my yang, the fresh prince to my jazzy Jeff, Bryson. How's it going today? Hey, Pascal. Doing well. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Um, today, we are joined by our good riding buddy and the queen of the switchbacks, as we called, it, called her the other day, Louise. How's it going, Louise? Hey, it's great. Thanks for having me. Well, you're very welcome. We're looking forward to the conversation. And uh, we also have to thank you for doing this uh, podcast in English. Uh, we really appreciate it and uh, look forward to our discussion on learning later on. But before we get to our conversation, let's uh, briefly do our spiel with the social and where you guys can find more information about the Skits and Giggles podcast. We are currently most active on Instagram where you can skid right into our DMs and follow along at Skits and Giggles. And you can find our website with all the relevant links and info under the URL skitsandgiggles.com. Also, if you guys like what we're doing and want to know what's up, just give us a follow on Spotify. Hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever else you listen to great podcasts. Finally, sharing episodes you enjoy on your socials or a heartfelt five-star rating on your favorite platform goes a long way in helping us reach more people like you. Right on, let's get back to Louise. The funny thing about today is that Louise is not only an interesting guest in her own right. She, is, uh, she also sent in a very interesting suggestion for a discussion topic about learning on the mountain bike. So the natural thing for us to do was to invite her on to explore the topic together. So Louise, we started asking our guests a while back to lay out what kind of mountain bikers they are, just to set the stage a bit before we get into the main conversation. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into your mountain biking, and what your riding looks like today. Sure, yes. That's a, that's a very broad question. <laughs> so I think that's compared why we to, ask it. <laughs> <laughs> compared to most of your guests, I'm probably, I think I'm quite new to mountain biking. Um, I... I started, I, I get, there's not one point, but I probably started trail riding more um, four years ago. Um, before that, I was, I, I had a mountain bike, which was like a 26 inch, super steep aluminum alloy. Uh, like it was shitty. <laughs> it was really shitty. I just, uh, I cycled up the mountain and then like my dad wanted to take me to the trail and I didn't want to go because on the trail you have to break so much. <laughs> and I didn't like that. I just wanted to blast down the gravel roads. And that's what I did uh, for a while, like going up and going down. And then, um, yeah, like four years ago, uh, the summer I was still living in Paris back then. But I was always biking on vacation and that's like the summer that I spent at home in Heidelberg where I come from, where actually the riding is fantastic. <laughs> um, and then I, I started to, to ride more trails and I realized, okay, well, you have to break way more and you go way slower actually on the trail, but it's still a bit more fun. Um, yeah, and then I had to finish like one year in Paris and after that I moved to Switzerland and it just exploded. So now I... Like, I mostly ride enduro. Uh, in winter, that means for me, hardtail riding on Utli back, <laughs> just going up and down the same track every day. But it's a different track because there's snow, there's mud, there's ice, there's everything. Sometimes sometimes it's even quite good. Um, yeah, and in summer, I'm pretty much every weekend, I'm somewhere in the mountains, uh, preferably with a shuttle. But yeah, still still a lot of climbing in my riding, though. <laughs> it's actually pretty disgusting following you on Strava and seeing how, uh, how, how far you get around and uh, all these cool destinations where you go. And uh, So what has been the, uh, the most interesting uh, discovery recently, maybe? There's so many, so many discoveries. When I, when I moved here, I think the first year, I just rode like Flims, Lenzer, Heide, Davos because I was just blown away that I could actually get there by train. And now I I think it's a bit more diverse. What was nice? Actually, school. I really liked where we went. The the thing you did the episode on as well. I heard you're a fan of Davos. Yes, I am. 
I was there. Actually, I was there last week and going to be back there this weekend, probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Now, I also, we rode in Fribourg the other weekend, which was super nice. Uh, close to Fribourg. Uh, like that a lot. Like, actually, uh, very surprisingly wet. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. And then sometimes quite flat. <laughs> and I was quite tired. But uh, it was actually super nice trails. Like, they were supposed to be below me. And you could imagine them being loamy. <laughs> but it with, seemed, with less, yeah. With less wet, it was loamy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, but very nice. Also super nice, steep sections, ruts, no, uh, roots, roots, rocks, everything I like. Well, uh, coming back to school, we obviously did the uh, episode the other day. And we, uh, yeah, we, we were obviously big fans. Uh, Bryson had a bit of a, a bit of a struggle with the destination. I, I generally enjoyed it. So, what was your main uh, main takeaway from going to Squall? That I really need the mullet. <laughs> no, it was actually um, uh, I had the bike for like one and a half months then, and I had mostly done like shitty mud rides with it because it was a shitty May. Um, so I was really excited to bring it to the mountains. There was really still a lot about that <laughs> also for me and like, uh, do some shuttle runs and, and get it. And I was actually, I was super happy. I mean, you talked about the switchbacks and God, they were tight. <laughs> like shit. <laughs> and, uh, with the, with the full 29er that I wasn't used to in the, in the mountains, I was really really happy to like to learn it <laughs> with that <laughs> to now switch it back and uh, say okay well <laughs> i have a little bit more space in the rear it's just a bit more <laughs> more flexible so when i actually the first thing when i when i think back to that trip is like oh my god i'm glad i changed <laughs> I maybe mean, there's lots of other takeaways but uh, yeah <laughs> so are you really noticing the difference for the mullet setup it's crazy. Like, it's actually funny. I usually, I'm not the person to notice a lot of things, to be honest. <laughs> like, a friend of mine once told me it's weird. I, I do notice weird things. Like, when the brake, like, with the brakes, when they're too far, uh, like, too far from the grips, I, I, I can't cope. Uh, but other things, like suspension setup and that kind of stuff, I'm not very specific. I don't change it much. But... With the like the change from the full 29er to the mallet, it was like it's a uh, it's worlds. It's a different bike. I love it. Okay. Well, we also need to clarify. I think uh, I was uh, on the on the recording uh, on school. I was a bit off the mark with your with your height. You're actually 175 175 meters tall. So uh, so what's that? Five five nine. So that's uh so yeah, that's actually a pretty you know. Good, good size for normally you would expect a 29er to be quite okay, but uh, I guess you're yeah, used to 27 and a half. Yeah, I guess it's kind of on the edge, but I, I'm used to the 27, and I think the kind of riding and my style of riding, like, is not really full 29er yeah. ish. Well, I mean, <clears throat> we uh, we we talked a lot about switchbacks and. Um, I think uh, well, obviously the, t the main topic for today is learning. So uh, I think a good a good segue to the main discussion would be uh, how did you learn to ride switchbacks in the Alpine like you do? <laughs> because it's it's a uh, yeah it is a uh, to to watch it's it's quite uh, quite fascinating because again you know you said you're you're on this uh, relatively big bike for yourself and uh, but but still you you kind of somehow managed to do it and. Um, even the tightest ones, and and your very uh, your perseverance with uh, with trying to get around those uh, switchbacks is uh, is admirable. <laughs> so how do you do it? Yeah, actually, this uh, it's funny because this circles a bit back to Davos <laughs> because I really still remember when I went to Davos for the first time. I was like, shit, like I really suck at this, and this really kills the flow. And I really remember like going back in the car saying like okay, I need to learn this. <laughs> this isn't fun. <laughs> like because really if if you can't do it, it's you just stop in every corner and you walk your bike around and then like it's it's really not fun. So um I think when I look how I ride switchbacks now, I think it's very much influenced by the fact that I 
could not lift my rear wheel for like forever. <laughs> so, and that my older bike, my old Brunson was super short, even for me. Um, and so what I did, because I think I always had like quite good balance, but I just never had like the, uh, like the confidence or probably also not the good body position and upper body strength to really lift my rear wheel well. So what I really trained myself and what I really perfectionized is like to make or not perfectionize, but get good at is to really try to make space when I start the corner because that is what, even in the switchbacks in school, it kills you when, because even when you can lift your rear wheel super well and super, if you if your front wheel is not in a position that you can actually make it work, that like your lifting will not will not help you at all. And now I've gotten a bit better at it. So as uh, Bryson, I think uh, accurately described, <laughs> if it's really necessary, then I'm just going to lift it a bit, and it's it's going to work out. But I think the harder part is even to get yourself like in like in switchbacks, like school, school. It's really to get your bike in a position where you can start lifting your your rear. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the again, as as you say, uh, is the. Um, the, the the making space where there is isn't really any and uh you know how do you approach your turns how uh how you position your front wheel how you and that starts so wheel. early i think where uh to to go actually on the inner side a bit to then be able to go super wide out and just yeah i think the the usual tip you get is like look where you go but that can be super tricky and it can also kill you. Like uh, in, in various situations, looking where, where I want to go has killed me already. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I think that also the process to getting there, I mean, this is like the how how I would describe my technique. Um, but I think the process to getting there is just what you also witnessed in school, like trying it a thousand times and... Uh, yeah, then trying it another thousand times, and when it then works, it's I I just love that feeling. So, oh yeah, I mean, it's I think that's uh, generally what uh, what brings uh, a lot of people to the sport, or keeps them in the sport, or brings them back to the sport, is this uh, sense of achievement of overcoming uh, an obstacle. Uh, and yes, of course, uh, you know, switchbacks is one thing, but there's there can be simpler things like a simple drop, or nailing a line or you know managing a little jump or something like that that uh you know that starts from from an early age i see it obviously with uh, with my kids that uh you know the very simple things that uh, gets them excited about uh, about trying stuff uh, and that continues on even uh, even to this day for my for myself at my advanced age <laughs> but uh <clears throat> But maybe uh, to um, to bring it back. I mean, I guess what um, what I saw from having written with you now for yeah, was that now a bit over a year, a couple of times. Um, what what is always um, fascinating me is that all in in all the the little downtime that we obviously have in riding with Bryson, with all the the bike tickling and uh, readjusting his saddle and brake pads and this and that and the P brakes and the P brakes. And the snack breaks. Oh, and yeah, the but cramp, those are, those the those are ones as well. <laughs> the, the, the pre, snack breaks. The, <laughs> Don't question snack breaks, please. No, never always be snacking. Uh, but the pre-cramping, the at-cramping and the post-cramping um, is, of course, uh, what I see is that you, you're you never sitting still apart from the snacking. And uh, you're always doing something to, to kind of, uh, you know, simple things like practicing track stands and trying crank flips and wheelies and you know little endos and stuff like that so is that always has that always been a part of your your process or is that um you know something you just do to kill the time uh probably not always because uh Usually I was the one like way behind <laughs> then coming and everyone was already waiting, had already peed, snack, cramped and everything. And then I was the one <laughs> like, okay, I'm here now. I don't need a break. Let's just continue. But <laughs> like, I can't go faster. <laughs> so it for sure wasn't that case forever. But yeah, it is. 
I I just get bored quite quickly. <laughs> this is the one uh, question your company, but uh, no, I just uh, if I have the time and I have the bike, I just uh, I can talk and do stuff. So I I, I can do it both, and uh, I think it just it's like extra fun added to your ride when you suddenly can do like a half decent crank flip. Now I can't do it anymore actually because I changed my hub and like it doesn't work. <laughs> I lost it. Uh, so yeah, for me, it's like you have the ride, which is fun and the company, which is fun. And then you have that on top. So it's like added fun. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. This, uh, you know, this is steady, steady practicing and, uh, yeah. So it's even the, the simple things. Uh, but, um, what are you currently in your in your writing? What are you what are you working on the most currently? And how do you approach that? I think there's one thing that I'm always working on, which for me is really the basis, is riding hardtail, trying to ride my hardtail cleaner and better. I think that is for everything I do on the Enduro bike, it helps it helps like on the hard tail, it's just I I love it how I just rode it today, uh, like in between rain showers, and it's so black and white. On you feel like a pro, and you <laughs> you feel like you're dying. It's so close to each other, and the the line is so fine. And uh, for me, that's a very general thing that I like. I have a, a trail hard tail which I really love, and a pump track hard tail, and uh, so like a dirt jumper, and like progressing at those riding those two cleaner faster and in a like nicer i think is something i always i always work on i love it um and i think a more concrete way for me it's like the one hard thing in mountain biking it's like turns like being able to do more open, wide turns, nicer, faster. That's something that's really not my my strength. Uh, I don't think you're ever done with uh, with with turns because I think you can always improve. Even if you're, even if you're uh, Sam Hill or Richie Root who can you know do cutties to rip his tires off. <laughs> I don't really. I don't train for like I don't race, so I don't train for speed or anything. But I mean, your corner speed is what makes your speed pretty much because I mean, anyone can yeah. go like, but the flip side to speed is efficiency. So if you can go the same speed, then, you know, it just, and using less energy and being more efficient is, uh, of course the, 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 hopefully the more preferable outcome. Yeah, But that's also the race of perspective because I don't, or maybe I should, but I don't really care about my riding efficiency. I'd rather go like just 100 meters of trail, like all out and kill myself almost and then have to stop and recollect myself <laughs> than do like the whole trail efficiently in the best average speed. Yeah, but I mean, it's, well, that's, uh, yeah, of course, that's, a, a, that's a, a, a personality thing, yeah. right? So it's kind of, uh, so yes, you know, I've, don't make any uh, excuses or, or secrets of that uh, of, of a racer mindset. Let's say at, at the very least, um, I do do the odd race here and then, but uh, the um, I think th this the mindset doesn't necessarily stop at the race. It can also translate to just riding a trail, True. Um, you know, True. getting because there sometimes there is just not the space to stop at every turn, or you don't want to stop at every turn. Also, because it's it's annoying when you have to stop because you like you're so stoked, but you can't go anymore. That's exactly that so, should, yeah. So then, so then you know, if you can do let's say five f five uh, corners on a on an exposed single track, then you know if you're getting through the first three more efficiently, that means you're fresher and safer for the last two. And that's kind of the, uh, the other, the other perspective. I think that's more the point I wanted to make. Yeah. But, um, when but you, yeah. when you learn or when you're working, working on your skills, I think is the, the overarching theme, not necessarily learning, um, learning new things or new tricks or, or new skills, um, alone, so when you when you work on your on your technique or skills, etc. So what are the tools that you use to um, to help improve? 
That's a good question. Uh, that's a very that sounds very much like uh, Bryson's approach with the very conscious. Uh, okay, what is this? Pre like the very the very con very conscious thinking about. Okay, well, how can I improve this? So, for me, I have a couple of things that are super important for the learning, which are very general, not as conscious steps as for Bryson. Um, I think I learn best in that situation where I can just where it's the same, the same feature or the same trail, like for the thousandth time. Um, I mean, riding tons and different locations will help you also with your riding. Um, but I think what I like in terms of like learning efficiency, the just knowing that turn so well, riding it a bit differently and having this really step-by-step -step progression, it's probably also very different for different kind of people. But for me, I think I'm more of a conservative learner that I like, I try stuff really like I try new stuff only when I have learned the former stuff really well. If I'm really uh, confident that this next step is possible and it's like a small iteration of what I did. So for me, the pump track is an amazing learning environment because I like, I think sometimes the people there think I'm crazy because I just do the same line over and over again. And like the difference to my ride is like so minimal. Then there's also some statistical variance so that sometimes it's even worse and then it gets better. But like on average, there's progress, <laughs> but over such a long time and but it comes from like having ridden that line like so many times. And now I have the confidence that I can say, okay, I can make little things and change this and try out that. And then like, now there's like the big step in front of me that I have to change to the bigger line. And it's like, that's, I know other people, they just, okay, I can do the small jumps. Now I can do the big jumps, but I'm like, okay, I have to like be really sure that I can do the first jump, then I can maybe try the second one. But I, only if I like already know when <laughs> like taking off that I can land it well, then I can be in the mindset that I could try the second one, but maybe also not. <laughs> so I, I really need that repetition over, um, yeah, on the same, in the same spot a thousand times, which is the same, I think for me with switchbacks, that's how you learn them, trying them, trying them, trying a different line yeah maybe filming yourself and failing I oh think yeah failing fail is the failing is the, the critical part of learning <laughs> yeah <laughs> F failing sounds so judgmental <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> not being successful <laughs> that's not less not less judgmental yeah, it's slightly but, less uh, negative connotation yeah yeah it's true but i mean fa failing is a good tool for learning it's a really good tool and failing differently many times it, exactly my, the point i wanted to make uh just because you can call it a fail it, it can still be a win for example you're doing the pump track and you're deciding okay on this corner i'm going to take a new line maybe a little bit tighter a little bit slower or faster and then you realize uh like you said maybe it's actually overall not going to bring you anything more but perhaps it sets you up for another corner or the straightaway to give you like speed for a, a double or an extra little oomph in your pump. Um, and therefore, you could call it a win after all. I mean, by exploring those options that s what it seems like could bring you a fail, you yeah. could learn other things, which would maybe gain you a net overall. And then learning back on what you or looking back on what you learned from that, you actually win in the, in the greater scheme. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, I mean, f failing, I think, is so important, like, for your mind, especially for me. It's just, I, I mean, I had to learn it on switchbacks and in steep stuff, but there, like, I'm much better. But on a pump track, I, I'm so crazy scared of, like, doing a tiny mistake because it's, like, the hardtail on the trail. It's also so black and white. It's so smooth if you get it right, and it's so fucking unsmooth when you don't get it right. Like, it's ah, like if you're used to like the enduro and like the big fork, big shock, and everything, and then like you're just like you don't, you're not concentrated on the pump track for a second, and like you get a hit that you don't <laughs> like. It's really not nice. <laughs> so it's almost it's almost like a laboratory. 
So because it's uh, it's so it's so transparent and honest with what you're doing, and uh, so yeah, I think it's uh, pump tracks are a uh, a great way to to practice skills to to work on uh, to work on your technique, uh, and it's a, not not necessarily the the gnarliest line and the biggest jumps and and all that sort of stuff. It's really the simple things of you know pumping your way through a line and finding the speed where there really isn't any and doing the turns properly or well trying different ways to do the the, the turns because of course you know there's a different a different way or the best way for for every rider i mean there's no it's not the same line for everyone um so yeah so i think it's it's pretty good and there's no, there's nothing else right so especially with the modern uh, concrete or asphalt uh, pump tracks there you know you can ride them in Rain or shine, it's always the same. Um, yeah, there's not, not, sometimes, not quite, yeah. <laughs> sometimes there's a bit of debris and stuff, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It, in comparison to a trail that is changing, yeah. uh, you know, fifteen minute uh, fifteen minute uh, intervals depending on the day. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot more laboratory like, if you will, uh, than yeah, than, than exactly. The and the feedback, as you say, it's so crazy transparent. Like, you just, I think I really learned to have, like, my weight centered on the bike on the pump track. Because the, the the trail bike, it just allows you, it always allowed me to shift back a little and I could still, like, ride a trail. But the pump track, you can't ride with the with your weight shifted a little back. It just, like, it doesn't work. You can't jump in. Like, you can pump, you can't jump. It, it doesn't work. And it will show you immediately if you do it. And that's, I think it's amazing. Um, you, uh, you already mentioned uh, the keyword video uh, earlier. Are you using any of those techniques to, to work on your, on your skills and your writing? Um, like, yes. In general, yes. So sometimes it's really, really conscious, like doing those great corner drills. Like sometimes this is meaning I... I think I did it like twice in my life, but I did it once recently, like filming and with cones and uh, with the new bike. And I think it like it reminded me of how much it helps. So that was really the conscious. Okay, we'll go to the streets, do that, film it, look at how we're doing, uh, make fun of each other as well. For sure, that's part of it. But uh, um, it was very conscious. But then also, I mean, with instagram and depending who you have around and like filming each other on the trail which can also just be cool to have the video after it's kind of natural like to in some groups it's just natural okay well we have some cool videos in the end and then there for sure is also going to be like uh, a couple of fails in there like when you say okay this is the hard spot this i'm going to do so it's it would be cool to have on video when i when i get that <laughs> like there's usually like three to four fails before that um yeah and i think I've, sure. I've already i also yeah i I like to when i post i like to post also like the fail before uh because yeah it sometimes uh it also shows how hard it is sometimes <laughs> yeah well, i guess that's uh, i think you know it's just a side note of how it's just uh instagram being like the most polished version of yourself and uh, of course everything is super easy and you're always nailing yeah. that trick and that turn and that jump but then if this, you're so. just nailing it it looks so easy oh, so yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah although i must i must admit i have i have a video from from last year in in davos actually the world famous off camber janky rock slap oh, in yeah. mayahov uh, I took I think the that ugliest was, line on that on Sunday, <laughs> like really uh, the there ugliest. You go. But uh, <laughs> I did, I did, uh, you know, I, I literally managed to grease that turn for the first time maybe like two weeks before, and uh, and I've That's been riding that trail for for, yeah. for a very long time. And that is a nasty one. And it's a nasty one, and it's um, you know we 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 rocked up to it, uh, and then we were like, well, I'm you know, let's just let's just do it like every other tra like every other corner. You know, set up wide, try to the widest line you can find, take it slow, and somehow somehow I got it. And then since then, I've never dapped on that slab ever since. And it's like one of the most exposed features in all of those. And yeah. everyone that sees that video is like, 
I can't believe how composed you are while you're staring down that the abyss of Actually, that corner. A friend of mine once like really uh, went straight face down into the bushes yeah. there. It's like uh, I still have that picture in my mind. Like, whoa, fuck! It's not. It's not. It's not a good time yeah. if you if you go down straight there. Uh, so that that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it so fine. it's. Uh, that's yeah. a fail you learn <laughs> okay exactly. well i can go head down the steep stuff <laughs> and You're i don't dying. die <laughs> yeah. it's an important part of learning uh louisa are you watching video from from any other riders trying to pick up some some points like analyzing what they're doing and maybe even watching some how-tos uh not consciously usually I mean, I watch a lot of riders just like through my everyday consumption of World Cup racing and related videos that I like. And I think I I take a lot from it unconsciously. Um, I think there are a couple of points that I once took like really, that were like really tips or like ex like verbal explanations on how to do something better that really clicked for me. But those are really like very little, like a very few. And the rest is more like just watching and then it's like this imitating, okay, well others do it like that. And when then I look at my video, oh that doesn't look <laughs> that doesn't look similar at all. <laughs> what what <laughs> what could I do differently? But yeah, it's more of a an like unconscious imitation. That's uh that's actually where I was going with this because I've also done my fair share of watching the watching um mountain bike pros and you know guys in my hometown and 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 afar doing features that I've tried to ride and similar things in similar locations similar terrain that I'm trying to kind of emulate and um the the one key thing that I've taken away from it is when I try to perform what I think is exactly what they did the outcome isn't the same and therefore in what, what way? I tried to, <laughs> what I tried to understand from that was maybe we are not doing the same thing, but what it gets me is something, something to learn from. So it's, I don't know, you know, I can think of a, just maybe a bench cut trail, it's heading uh, down, downhill. And then there's like kind of a, a lofty, loamy like shoulder. And you just kind of like try to pop up onto it and maybe do just kind of a little jib and you can see hundreds of riders before you do any kind of jib up this little shoulder and, you know, kick dirt up or slash or whatever it is. And you can try all doing all, all of, all of the, all of this as yourself and it will always look different. What are, what are we trying to do by thinking that we can do the same thing as somebody else? But I think that would have been my next point that it's for me, it's probably it's less the pro riders. Those are really like, of course, somewhere in the mind. OK, that would be cool if I could ride like that. But what's way more helpful, I think, is the riders that you really ride with. So those who are in front of you and those can make a much bigger difference because you see them ride the trail if you're lucky and you can just imitate their movements in a much smoother way, like to see, okay, well, if he can pop on that feature, if he does that movement or she, then like, theoretically, I should be able to do that as well. <laughs> and then sometimes you learn something and sometimes you fail really hard, but it's much easier to like learn right in the context and like in the flow of things than watching a video, going to your trail with your bike, with your abilities and trying to, to imitate that yeah no i mean i think that's a that's a very good point in terms of uh you know the the, the people you surround yourself with in terms in, in, when you ride is, is also kind of a big big influence and inspiration on your own technique and and, and riding right so it's um and always, I'm always uh, very, very interested and curious to see kind of what can what I can learn from from someone else. Yes, I know Bryson; it doesn't look like that, but uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a very visual person. I observe, um, you know, like other writers around me. I watch a ton of videos. Um, you know, look at the minute detail, try even the, the, the frames and stuff like that uh, to understand what's actually going on. Um, 
And I think that's a, you know, that's a very important component for me and for, for let's say, progressing my own writing, if you will. Um, the, I think what is the most valuable um, input in that regard is like really how the other writers in the group see you write. So because, of course, you have your division of like, you're jamming, everything is great, you're, you know, super cool trails, everything is fine. And, uh, and then people are riding behind you and, uh, and are like, you know, what are you doing? I mean, why are you doing this? Why are you not, why are you not trying something else? So, you know, we've, we've had our common friend Yeti. First time we, we went um, to, to Finale a couple of years ago and um, it was like one of, uh, yeah, it was, one of, was my first trip to, to Finale and uh, I think one of the really first trips to like a des- dedicated trail riding or downhill um, spot, riding spot, and uh, just having the time to really put in the time, just focusing on the downhills and, and taking the time to um, kind of, you know, listen what he had to say. It's like a, after the one run, he was like, you know, Pascal, why, why are we, are, why are you doing so much work on the bike? Why are you not letting the bike do the work for you? And I was like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> and then, you know, we start switching it up in the group and and I started watching the other riders, started watching him, like how he kind of operates or finds the balance between doing the work himself and uh, and um, letting the bike do the work. And then I was like, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, actually, maybe I should try this. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, there was this little um, light bulb moment. I was like, well, wow, this is really good. And then every other time, so then I ride with Bryson and he has, sometimes he's like, you know, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And they start thinking about it and then start looking at videos or something else. And I think uh, this, this, this kind of constant feedback loop with your, you know, between seeing yourself and your friends seeing you ride is a, is a very important, very important I fully component. agree, actually. And I think we can do that even way more. Like to not call each other out, but like uh, try to... Yeah, give tips on the on the things we can improve because I think it's I, usually just the culture is more in the way that you like you talk about the stuff that you yeah you're really good at, but like what to improve is the uh, it's a bit harder to bring as as a topic, but it would be great to talk about it way more. Yeah, fully agree. Um, I, I yeah personally I should do a much better job at that. <laughs> Uh, b- both ends, on both ends, in receiving as well as dishing out. <laughs> but, 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 Pascal, uh, why don't why don't you cramp more? Uh, maybe I should be. I should. Maybe I should be cramping. Maybe I should be cramping more. So yeah, no, I haven't. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want to cramp again. I've had plenty of cramps in my life, so I've, I think I've done all of those. <laughs> I've done all of them. <laughs> done with cramps. But uh, but yeah, no. I mean, it's. Um, it's a very it's a very valid point, especially when you're riding in a group that that knows each other very well. You kind of, uh, you know, it's generally a very good vibe. There's uh, you know there's that space where you can sit down and say like, hey, you know, have you have you thought about this? And you know, why don't you try this? This is a bit off topic, but I think that's a big big advantage of biking as a woman, <laughs> because I think we just get way more tips. And sometimes it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to call it that <laughs> because I think that the term is really overused. But I mean, to be honest, I think the threshold for tips is just a bit lower and it can be super annoying, but it can also be so helpful. It's crazy. But uh, to bring it back to, to learning, I think one, one thing I'm really interested in um, personally is um, inspiration from, from other sports. Um, are you taking any of the techniques from, let's say, other disciplines or other sports altogether into account in your in your um, in your writing? Uh, I'm probably the wrong person to ask for this because <laughs> I don't do much else now. Um, yeah, I have some other influences probably. So I I grew up like skiing a bit, not like people who grew up in Switzerland, but uh, like skiing. Skiing, I, I think, well, for how much skiing I did, like a week a year. Um, and that, I think, does make a big difference. I actually, I talked to uh, two friends last summer. One one is like a really good snowboarder and one is a really good skier. And it's so, uh, 
interesting like, to see how different, like at what different things they're good at because of the sports they're so good at. Like the snowboarder, she's so good at like the front and back loading. So she's super good at like pushing over uh, like uh, uh, drops or like steps and that kind of stuff. And the skier, she's so good at turns. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> like, but it's just like they they struggle more with the other side that they don't have because that they can just transfer over. But to be honest, I don't have that thing that I can just transfer over. I think for me, it's more... Uh, I, I used to do horseback riding when I was young. <laughs> so I already know. <laughs> and like really, it... It, it, it's not as cool as like the free ride stuff, but I think it requires quite a similar mindset, at least in the way that I did it. Like, really, it's a uh, it's quite a, quite a mind game, I think. Okay, so you you have plenty ex- uh, plenty of experience of being uh, thrown off the horse, quite yeah, literally. and like being scared. <laughs> and now, actually, it's it's with, with horses, it's even more more interesting because you're scared, but there is like an an animal that will feel when you're scared, so. You cannot, like, you actually cannot be scared, or you cannot show it, because the the horse will get that. <laughs> so maybe that's uh, when I <laughs> when I approach a switchback and I tell myself, okay, well, the bike cannot cannot realize that I'm scared. I th- that might help. <laughs> the bike is not allowed to win. <laughs> yeah, I got this. <laughs> no, actually, well, I I think a bike and me we're, we're both uh, both winning in that case because. Uh, uh, yeah, I already put some decent scratches <laughs> in my quite new bike. <laughs> That's good. No, I find, I just find it interesting uh, this this um, cross cross inspiration. And yes, of course, skiing is a is a very good one. Um, we've we've had the conversation before, um, and you obviously you mentioned it yourself that people that have kind of a an, certainly an alpine skiing background that they're generally very familiar with the notion of kind of. Uh, leaning the bike over and finding the grip on the, the edge of the tires and, and stuff like that. But and it's I mean, crazy, it's also yeah. Some people who have that background, like, I don't know, who are just familiar with airtime, they just take a like, and with balance and, like, weight shifting, and they just take a bike and they do two or three runs and then they go to the bar- park and then they do crazy stuff. Yeah, but that's the same the same stuff with uh, you know if you listen to motocross riders or supercross riders coming to mountain biking, um, yeah. you know they they are struggling with like slow janky technical yeah. things, and then you put them on like super fast rough big jumps everything else. They're like, oh wow, I'm I'm right at home. That's that's pretty pretty yeah. pretty easy. So so yeah, I think. <laughs> But uh, that, uh, I guess, is to my point, right? Is is kind of the there is a, a lot of uh, scope for um, you know, kind of let's say cross inspiration, right? So you know, and even and I mean, even within biking, there are so many disciplines in biking, like taking the inspiration from like smaller bikes, bigger bikes, different, and then even like within one discipline within biking, like uh, if you say enduro, enduro here looks so different to. Enduro from my home, back home in in Germany. So it's uh, like you can get inspiration from so much closer, even which is so so incredibly diverse. Oh, absolutely, and I, you know, again, that's uh, uh, another another point we we discussed uh, before we started recording. Is of course like the you know this conditioning on your on your hometown riding, right? Is also. We talked a little bit about uh, you know traveling and and riding in different places and how that kind of opens you up to learning different skills and more diverse uh, riding environments. But um, you know, back to your point of like riding the pump track and doing the thousand uh, the a thousand times the same line uh, in your pump track. I think there's also value in perfecting perfecting your home trail. But uh, there's a there's a fine a fine. A good balance between perfecting your your home trail and and also kind of having the exposure to to um, to some diverse uh, other absolutely. Terrain if I you, think if that is to. really like the base work that you can always improve and always work on that base. But then it's like bring that skill that you acquire and you improve. Like for me, it's like bringing it to the enduro bike and with the enduro bike to like anywhere, and that will like being able to like. 
even if a skill, if you have it, but you're not like you cannot apply it in the situation, it won't help you at all. Like if you're not sure, can I do this? Or like not feeling the the terrain or the ground, then even if you have like the perfect technique, but your mind can say, well, like even mind or even like the skill for that specific terrain can be so so specific that it won't uh, it it won't help you in the end. Definitely, from experience, doing doing things with repetition, sessioning, you're gonna you're gonna see the fastest gains. It's like um, it's like how athletes train uh, with uh, hill sprints or um, what do you call it? intervals. You just get yeah, stronger and stronger. <laughs> well, you will never see me do that. You know, <laughs> but yeah, it's one thing to 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 get stronger and stronger, but that's also improving your technique each time as well, which is also helping your strength. And it might be the strength in your muscle, but also might be the strength in your mind, knowing that you're confident enough each time again to repeat or better what you just did. I mean, do you do, do that? Do you kind of just say, okay, I'm going to ride this line like I normally do, but I'm going to try to do something that I don't ever do? On the pump track, actually not so much. Like there, it's really hard for me to do like big steps in uh like to change big things because i'm so scared there <laughs> so like really uh, crossing over like trying a new jump there is for me is like i need to prepare myself for a while so i have to at some point because i feel i have to 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 progress more because it's like on one line you can then progress like you can go up 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 but there is like a ceiling or you of course you can still progress a lot but it's it's then slower and i feel like if i get if i had the confidence and improve my technique on the like sharper takeoffs it would be it would help me much more but then like there's a lot more like from the comfort zone i get thrown really into the the fear zone <laughs> and i have to work hard to get like the fear zone to the comfort zone again and it's a very uh disruptive for me on the pump track on i think on the on the enduro bike it's so much easier to just like at least for me it's just easier to try i mean not with big jumps as well like jumps are always they they just consequences are so much higher but to try to ride a trail that i know well differently is for me much easier like on the trail than on the tr- pump track, actually. Yeah, and that's one of the highlights for trail riding for me is if I'm going to a new section, I want to ride a different line. Yeah. But also, uh, unless it's like I mean, one of those the lines where you find to, that to flow. ride it differently and to have that aha moment for me is to follow someone who hmm. just rides it differently. Like uh, when I when I know when I ride a trail that I know well by myself. It will be just mentally. It's very hard to diverge because it's like it was actually funny now when I switched the bike trails that I know well. I'm not so fast with the new bike because I try to ride it the same as with the smaller bike, and it doesn't really work. And like new trails that I don't know, I now like I know okay I can go straight, <laughs> it will work. <laughs> but like those where I had my lines dialed before, I tried to ride it as with the 27 inch super short bike, and it's a uh, yeah, it doesn't work so well <laughs> with the big wheels <laughs> and the longer bike. So, uh, yeah, what I was what I was wanted to say is, yeah, I think the easiest for me at least, or like from the mental side, is to to follow someone and have that. Whoa, I can ride that line, or I can do this here, and then this is gonna be smoother. Yeah. So, I see where you're going with that, like. But can you take that away and do it without following somebody? So, for example, this is something I try to do. Um, you have your your home trail or favorite trail or whatever it is, and you know some line is like the money, right? You yeah. just can grease that line and stick it yeah. or whatever it is, and you feel like that's the line, and I, I feel so good when I pull that move off. Do you ever try to deviate from that and say like, okay, well, what if there's an even greasier line or like, what if I can cut it harder and totally like realize, okay, nope. Um, yes. Sometimes by accident. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I mean, 
you just don't you don't always have the same day you don't always have the same yeah uh conditions you ride in and then you end up on different lines even randomly <laughs> sometimes they work sometimes they don't <laughs> and uh, that's the i think also the beauty of it <laughs> sometimes uh, it's a very conscious choice where i know okay well this i'm not riding so well so i try to do it differently on a line that i that i think i have like dialed then it's more probably more that situation where i like i know i have like a plan b and c if i if i mess it up and maybe they turn out to be better. <laughs> For example, I think maybe you know Spielplatz Trail in Zurich. It has quite the spicy entry. It's a bit mean because also you have like zero warm up. And when I first rode it, I was super conscious on, okay, well, if I go left there and then turn right, like to find the smoothest line. Um, and I think the more I've, and it's also blind when you enter, you have to, it's a right corner, right hand, and then it's like, it's just roots and steep and you have to catch yourself before the end or you're going to go places you don't want to go. And I think the more I wrote it and the more I fucked up that line that I had chosen, which was so good, I learned that actually you can just go straight <laughs> and if you kind of stay <laughs> in control and just be careful that you can break in the end it's just like you can kind of roll anywhere <laughs> but it, it it wasn't conscious it was uh yeah just super far left it gets really gnarly i gotta say but uh, uh as long as you stay away from that one big big bigger thing then yeah but it was more of a random discovery that okay that line is great but all the others work as well and they're way more straight i see because when i when i ride a trail uh, especially one that I know. Um, I like to approach it with like a new eye. And I know I have the old eyes for it. And I think I might have new eyes for it, like seeing a different approach, having a different angle of approach to a corner or slower or faster. And I see other people do those as well. And I think, okay, maybe I could try that. But wh where is it going to leave me afterwards? Okay, that's, a, that's kind of an afterthought. But I want to try it anyways because I, I just kind of want to feel like what if I do something that's not meant to be done and maybe it works really well and maybe I learn something from it or maybe I just have a new experience. Um, it's kind of like what that's – yeah, it, it, kind of what gets me going, like floats my boat, you know, like to just kind of try those things and say that they didn't work and I'm like happy about that. That's like a good – that's like a good – a good That's aspect a, of riding for a me. A very similar approach to, to your bike tickling, right? It's a group dynamic, right? So, and, you know, there's a, the, the right balance for the right group, right? Yeah. So some groups, they want to <clears throat> try, try, more, try more different lines or different features and stuff like that. And others just want to ride more. I mean, you know, it all, it all, it all depends a little bit on that. But uh, I guess... Uh, <clears throat> I think we have to well apart from from Bryson you, you obviously know a thing or two about uh about teaching and uh, and coaching and 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 all these things but uh I think both Louise and I we are we're talking more from our own personal experience rather than from a professional certification um so it's just our own perspective um but I think um overall I think maybe to to close out um you know maybe Louise what uh if there's one thing when it comes to learning new stuff or new skills or new tricks on the bike, what is your what is your main point? What is your most most important tool in the in the toolbox? I think one that we haven't uh, like one point that I would want to make, which we haven't touched actually, which I realize now, um, it's like implicitly it's in there, but I think it's like the most important thing for me <laughs> is like to not get and to not get ego in the way in 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 whatever way to not be like okay probably it's not going to work so I'm not going to try in that way just like accept that you're going to fail 10 times and and then maybe it works or maybe it's just a bit less shitty but that's also great <laughs> um so in that way but also in the other way just be sure you only try the stuff that 
does make sense to try and uh yeah don't don't overdo it i think ego ego mostly hurts in biking in one way or the other not progressing or progressing too hard yes <laughs> <laughs> exactly okay bryson what do you got on this i'm not sure where ego falls for me i um I don't consciously try to progress. I just I just want to ride my bike, have fun, try different things. Like I, like I explained before, I just want to see where my creativity takes me. So turn harder or should I go slower or faster or you know, just try to interpret everything differently and see see what it brings to me. And then yeah, just kind of look back and see did I make the right choice? Did I like it? Do I want to do it again? Do I want to improve on it or I don't know. I don't really, I, I used to want to be a pro, of course, like growing up in Vancouver, uh, watching all these guys on the North shore and, and ever, elsewhere, I was, you know, totally into getting like the same bike and kit and everything. And I wanted to be one of those guys, uh, and realize soon I'm not so athletic or talented, but, um, I really wanted to, and I tried to push myself Nowadays, I don't try to progress. I just enjoy my time on the bike because I know through experience, good and bad, I am going to learn something from it. And it's up to me to interpret that in order to, yeah, I guess, progress myself or at least at the basic level, have a good time. Okay. Very good. And uh, your main, uh, what is your main input or your main tool for if you talk about learning on the bike yeah the, i think the most important thing is that you find that thing that makes it important to you so i can give my example very shortly i'm into like finding new places going different places experiencing different things and so right now i've been spending a lot of time on my road bike as well um because uh, you know we're in switzerland so there's a ton of like mountain passes so I've kind of put this challenge upon myself to do like all of these passes, like not like the big ones, but just the local ones for now. And, and it, 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 it brings me this, this sense of uh, accomplishment and, you know, all these things that you want to kind of uh, to give you endorphins. Right. So uh, there's that. And then, of course, it translates into mountain biking. We're going to different places like Schkuol and uh, Davos. And you introduced me to Davos and, um, you know. And such. So, finding that thing that really uh, lights the match or sparks or whatever, and continue with it. I think that's. I think it's a really important part. Pascal, I'd like to hear your take. Um, yeah, you know, my take is not. Uh, I mean, it's not a, a recommendation as such. It's just. Um, I think the uh, the power of visualization, both uh, in using videos to inspire your own writing, um, be it new tricks, be it new techniques or whatever it is, look, watching pros, watching other friends or whatever, um, write stuff that you want to write, so bringing it back to your inspiration, what you want to progress towards, etc. cetera. Um, I think that is a very important tool for me personally. Um, and uh, And... I, I try to use this as much as as much as I can. Of course, I write uh, most of the time on my own. So last year, I bought myself a little tripod that I can use to film myself doing corner drills and experiment with different um, cornering techniques. So I kind of started comparing, uh, you know, different writer styles with different backgrounds and and kind of trying to translate that to to my own writing. So a specific example was. Um, I think it was uh, Casper, yeah, I think it was Casper Woolley, a Squamish, Squamish uh, junior EWS rider. Um, he's from a, an alpine ski racing background. So if you look, look at him cornering and uh, and compare that to, I think you know, we discussed it on the last episode with, uh, you know, the pro tips of, on cornering and, you know, doing your, rotating your hips, etc. So if you watch him turn, he doesn't actually turn his hips all that much, which is something I'm kind of pretty familiar with because um, I've, I've grown up skiing quite a lot and and uh, doing quite a bit of that myself so I was just trying with that and see how that translates to my own writing and 
comparing the different videos and then looking at uh, how, how the, the corners actually turned out. So I think it's an important tool. Um, it's uh, yeah something that's with a mo you know relatively modern smartphone. It's it's pretty cheap, pretty easy to do, and um, and, and it's something that that uh, you can also do with your friends or your family or whatever, and uh, can help you progress uh, or improve or whatever your measuring stick is with your writing um, quite a bit. It's always great when you have something to to take to show to take a look at, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Is that that notion of like you know what you think you're doing and what you're actually doing? Mm. <laughs> that is always that discrepancy is is always quite uh, quite quite entertaining actually. Yeah, it is a very powerful professional tool. Mm. The bomb is dropped. We need to enter sound effect. Uh, we have a listener question from an avid listener, and so the question is. Does Louisa think endos around right switchbacks are faster? Or if Jesse Malamed's skid, th skid through tactic is? What's your take, Louisa? Wait, so first I'm thinking about who sent this. <laughs> um... I'm not sure I understood the question. So it's about right, like on the right side specifically. Yeah. Right side turn switchbacks. So it's either endo or the yeah. Jesse Malamed uh, famous skid through. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the obviously super annoying answer is it depends. For me, it's definitely the skid through because I have to go almost full, st or like depends on the corner, probably full stop. For the endo so that makes it quite like can be fine but makes it quite unflowy and slow so if i can if there is any way i can roll through for me it's probably like it's for sure faster if i roll through if you're like the super stylish person who can just like roll through on the front wheel then go for it you can probably do it way faster than me anyways <laughs> but uh yeah i'm i think the the floria line should be should, should be the faster if it's possible in general well we're getting towards the end of our time so we would uh we'd like to close out the show with our um with our closeout questions so louisa uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that uh, that first bike that got you really stoked on riding a bike Ah, yeah, it was a it was a beautiful one. It's still I actually I met it at the pump track a couple of weeks ago because I sold it uh, to a twelve year old boy. <laughs> um, it that's the one I got when I got more into trail riding, and it was a Radon Slide Carbon. <laughs> Radon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it was Radon, and it it even had one sixty travel front and back. A bit steep for today's um, standard super light super like yeah in the end uh, I got the my Bronson afterwards and then I realized how noisy it was <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> like I got on that bike was like oh well <laughs> I don't need a bell or anything like everything I think it also fell apart you can ask Yeti like when I sold it it was a uh, it was really the frame and every component was just done. <laughs> I'm sure you made him a good price. I did. I did. Good. <laughs> Take it, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, imagine you're Harriet Schedini and you're a bike magician extraordinaire and you can make, make riding a bike more awesome for anyone by the stroke of a magic dropper post. What would you do? I would uh, just make them try out new stuff more often. Just uh, just try it out. Just uh, with not too much expectation. Just try it, try it again. <laughs> try it more. <laughs> as basic as it is. All hail the switchback queen. <laughs> switchback or not, tell us about the best, favorite, most skid. It's it's a lot on like what you expect and what you get, I think. Like when you expect you barely make it or you just gonna there's gonna be a little bit of skid and then there's like the it's usually that it's the ground which 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 is maybe a bit different and it just 
explodes way more than you thought, <laughs> then that's that's the one. That's the one. It's all about what you think you're going to get and what you're going to get out of it. <laughs> nice uh, mental pictures. Um, <laughs> uh, Louisa, thanks again for your time. This is really, really cool. Um, if uh, listeners have any questions or want to learn more about your learning techniques and uh, the best pump track lines, where can they find you? How can I get in touch? Um, yeah, I think there's only one way, and that is Instagram. So it's uh, <laughs> Pascal knows very well how to spell my name there. <laughs> um, it's Louise Dash Marie with two I because, of course, Louise Marie was taken, and I wasn't more creative when I created my Insta profile. <laughs> so, but uh, probably also easiest to find via any of your story and posts lately. That's probably easier than looking for the. Uh, Absolutely, yeah, and we put name. it up in the in the show notes so you can find it. Perfect. And uh, just hit her up on Instagram. Well, thanks again. This is really cool, very insightful, and I hope uh, you know everyone got a little bit, a little bit of uh, insight and uh, and some tips, maybe some takeaways. And uh, I hope uh, you had a good time, Bryson. Yeah. Thank you, Louisa. Thank thanks you. Thanks for having me. I for sure have a couple of things that tomorrow, when I do the same ride as I do every day on Italy, <laughs> I will make a bit differently. I'll try it. Very least. good. Nice. We had a positive impact. It was a blast. I'll uh, I'll send you an update from my uh, video. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Ciao.